Welcome to the Stephen Carr Radio Show, and check out this quick highlight of today's broadcast. I want to know in the name of Jesus, I don't want to have another day where I'm mad at myself, feeling like I could be more, I could do more, I could have more, and I don't know how to get the more. Have you ever felt empty in your spirit? Well, I rebuke your emptiness from this day forward in the name of Jesus. You will know, you will see, it will be discerned all that the Lord has in store for you. To God be the glory and welcome to the Stephen Carwright Radio Show. I am your host, Stephen Carwright, and I'd like to welcome you to Faith and Empowerment in the Kingdom. If you're in the Denver area, please join us at the Refuge of Denver on Sundays at 10 a.m. at 9250 East Bellevue Avenue in Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. We would love to worship with you and your family. And as always, you can connect with us on our website at www.therefugedenver.org to stay connected and up to date to everything that God is doing right here with our community of faith. Thank you again for joining us, and we pray that you are blessed and edified by the message. The kingdom of God is not a concept, saints. It is a reality. There's this movie out. There's this movie out called Midnight Special. It sounds weird, but it's not what you think. (laughs) Midnight Special. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Midnight Special is a movie about a kid who can see transdimensionally. He has this superpower. It's a good movie. And it's actually very clean. It's a cool movie. He, he has to keep, he keeps these goggles on his eyes because when you take the goggles off of his eyes, his eyes light up. And, and he can see the other dimension. He can see clear into another world. Right? Here's the, here's the unique part. The world he sees is not millions of miles away. He says, there's another world on top of this world. God, there's another world on top of this world. And I see them. When he realized it, he thought he was seeing like outer space. He thought it was something unique. He, he said, I realize it's another world. We just can't see it. He says, I belong to that other world. And it's been giving me the locations to how to get to that world. Who got a Bible in here? Please lift your Bible up. You belong to another world. And this Bible is giving you the coordinates, the coordinates of that word. It's of that world. It's telling you how to live in the world that you really belong to. It's telling you how to live and exist and prosper in the world that you are really attached to. Other people can't see it. That's why Christians are peculiar. Because the message is detached from the principles that govern the world we see. Kenneth Copeland would say it's it's above the light line. It moves faster than the speed of light. So we cannot see it with our natural eye. If I took you to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, man, come on, this is going to go there. I'm right. Hold Mark chapter 4. We might as well have Bible study real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Go start at verse 9. We know this one, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, you ready? It says, but as it is written, I has not seen... Ear hasn't heard, right? All right, I want you to say natural eye has not seen. Natural ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the natural heart of man. And then we'll finish. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So what is it saying? I haven't seen it. I haven't heard it. It hasn't always entered into my heart. What God has prepared for me. So many times when we're teaching this, we're saying, well, you know, we can't always know because there's still things God has for you that you haven't seen yet. But hold on. He says in verse 10, he says, but God has revealed them unto who? 
unto us. So the truth of the matter is your natural eye can't see it, but your spiritual eye can. The truth of the matter is you can know everything about God's kingdom. You can know everything about what God has in store for you. But you, you, you can only know it through the spirit of God. Because the spirit is your access into the other dimension. God, man. He says, but God, verse 10, but God has revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. By his what? Spirit. By his what? Spirit. By his what? Spirit. No, by your education. Spirit. By your intellect. Spirit. By your family makeup. Spirit. By who your parents were. Spirit. By where you grew up. See, here's what I'm saying. No denomination can teach you everything about yourself. No pastor can teach you everything about yourself. Where you come from ain't ever told you everything about yourself. If anything, it limited yourself because it made you feel like there were some things you could not have. But when you cross over into the kingdom, not only did you get access to the kingdom, but you got access to kingdom information. You can know these things. You can perceive these things. These things can be discerned in your heart. You can receive these things. So no more allowing ignorance to be bliss for you. You're going to pray. You're going to fast. You're going to get on your knees. You're going to say, God, open up to me the wisdom of heaven. Let me see clearly what it is you have for me. I want to know in the name of Jesus. I don't want to have another day where I'm mad at myself, like I could be more I could do more I could have more and I don't know how to get the more have you ever felt empty in your spirit well I rebuke your emptiness from this day forward in the name of Jesus you will know you will see it will be discerned all that the Lord has in store for you Come on, y'all better receive it. Say, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is your supernatural informant. You will be on your job and he will tell you who to deal with and who to stay away from. You will be on your job and he will tell you the people that is out to get you and the people that are for you. You can know these things. Woo. Woo. Man, man, hold on, hold on. I want you to put your hand on your mind right now. Hand on your mind. Just, I, I want to I wanna say this over your life. I rebuke every bit of ignorance in the name of Jesus. When I say, listen, when I say ignorance, I'm not saying you're dumb. I'm saying a lack of information. See, my God, oh my Lord, keep your hand on your head. There are levels of information that God is trying to get you to break into. Let me say this to you real quick. There are levels of information that God is trying to get the reason why he's pressing you to pray more, to fast more, to study more, is because these are gateways to supernatural information. This is how you access the information of the kingdom of God. This is how you access the insight and I'm telling you right now, he's pushing you forward because there's more information. The reason why you haven't moved yet is because you're lacking another piece of information. But God is about to inform your knowledge. He's about to show you what to do about your kids, your job, your education, your money. He's about to not only show you, but he's going to strengthen your hands to get it done. My God, you who don't feel like you're intellectual enough to pass a test, you've been waiting to pass a simple test. God says, I'm going to increase, expand it. I'm going to show you how to get the answers done. You've been diligent to study. You've been diligent to pay your money for the education you need. I'm going to back it up with my supernatural power and I'm going to move you forward because I got purpose for you in the kingdom and in the earth and I'm going to help you get it done. And put, come on, Keep your hands on your head. I download it to you now in the name of Jesus. Come on, man. Woo! <coughs> Hands off your head. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. 
For the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. This is why I have to say this. This is why you have to be mindful of people who try to make you insecure about spiritual activity. This new generation has been so jaded when it comes to spiritual spookiness that we have disconnected from it altogether. And now we're being seeker friendly, but we're not being spiritual friendly. And we're looking for people to come and be happy and have emotional outbreaks, but they're not supernatural encounters. And you need the spirit. You need to be at churches that pray in tongues. Come on, man. Y'all gonna be mad at me. You're gonna be mad at me. You, you need to, and you need to be okay with it feeling stupid because there's a language, there's a communication that's going on between you and the spirit, that other dimension. You are now in communication with that other dimension. And there are many people who have had prophecy spoken over their life because somebody took just a few seconds to talk to the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, what do you want me to say to thee? I need the Holy. I don't know how you make it in this world without the Holy Ghost, man. Come on. It's spiritually discerned. I need my kids need a father who knows the Holy Ghost. My daughter needs a father. My sons need a father who knows the Holy Ghost. The people on my job need a co-worker who knows the Holy Ghost. I need to be able to talk to him and communicate with him because the tenets of the kingdom, it not only has its own information, but it has its own language. Would you believe it that when you speak it, you are speaking a language from the kingdom, my God? You are being downloaded with divine secrets from the heavenly realm that are necessary for activity to go forward in the earth. I've learned this. I've learned this. I can teach anybody how to preach. I can't teach you how to be spiritual. I can teach you how to fake it. You can fake it till you make it. I cannot teach you. How do I do this? You must engage the Holy Ghost. You must seek after him. He says, seek me with all of your heart and you will find me when you have sought for me with all of your heart. And he says, I will show you great and mighty things. So I seek him, I access the spirit realm, and then I begin to have revelation opened up unto me. What do you think was happening when Jacob was able to figure out how to get all of those cattle and all of those lambs and sheep from his father-in-law who was doing him wrong for 20 years? God gave him a divine strategy. And nobody could say that he was still in sheep because he was three days journey away from his father-in-law. God gave him a strategy on increase, produce, and a new word, accumulation. You don't think God can give you a strategy for how to get your next promotion? A strategy for how to start the business? You don't understand that God can give you a strategy for how to pursue your education? So there was a young lady, heard a preacher tell a story about his, 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 his niece who was very smart. She was going through college and she was getting ready to get her degree or her master's. She got all the way to the end and they told her she needed one more class to take. Now, now, mind you, she's going through college. She's not able to participate as much as she can in church. She's not able to. She's ready to go forward. And they tell her she has one more class to make, take. Her father says, her, her uncle says, you need to take this class. And God's going to help you take this class. And you're going to be able to do it because when you come out, the degree that you're trying to get is important to what God wants to accomplish in your life for the kingdom. So you may be shut up and isolated right now, but when you get done with this process, you're going to be empowered for supernatural change to happen in the marketplace. You don't understand what I'm saying. He says, I can empower you right where you are. You don't understand that you are a part of God's kingdom agenda and 
and your life is not your own and you're not just here living. You are here on assignment. Bill Winston would say you are not employed by that job. You have been deployed to that job. You are a kingdom agent. You represent the kingdom of God on that job and it's high time for the body of Christ to line up. Can I give you one more? The reason why the kingdom message has been stifled is because we spend so much time talking about salvation that we have not translated salvation to kingdom access. So now men are trying to be delivered from their sins, but they're not trying to step into the life that free from sin gets you into. He says, I have translated you. I've called you out of darkness into. Don't tell me you came out of something until you tell me what you went into. You can come out of it. You can stay there. If you never go in, you will be susceptible to going back to the very thing. Many times, the reason why we walk around in circles is because we're so focused on coming out of this and coming out of that and I gotta get out of this and I gotta get out of that but we never go in so come out of it for what? Just to not drink? Just so I cannot smoke weed? No, 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 no. You have kingdom purpose and sanctification will keep you from everything that will hinder your kingdom assignment, man. You here on purpose. I rebuke every voice that ever told you you were nothing. You couldn't be nothing. You wouldn't be nothing. You should, do you understand sometimes kids tell other kids you should just die. Why are you alive? The devil is alive. I know why I'm alive. I'm here on a Simon, I got kingdom purpose. There's greater things God wants to get out of my life, and I will have it, and I will do it, whether you believe it or not. Tell three people say, I'm here on purpose. I'm here, I'm here on purpose. I'm here on purpose. I'm here on purpose. Can I give you one more? Can I give you one more? The reason why you should not forsake the assembling of the brethren is because there are certain revelations that you cannot, that you can only have in the assembly. There is, there is an atmosphere that is created in our midst where faith comes together and it makes it easier for us to receive. It just does. I believe that. It, it makes it when you come together, you get supercharged because you're in the midst of all these other people whose faith you agree with. And when you get in an atmosphere of agreement, then the spirit of God can flow more freely because we're all on one accord. Like on the day of Pentecost, right? They prayed in unison, in unity, on one accord, with one mind, with one purpose. And then what? Then, then there came from heaven a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Do you not understand why we've been in this room? There have been things rushing into people's hearts. You don't understand how God is impregnating people while I'm preaching. You don't understand how God is enlightening people while you were worshiping. There were breakthroughs going on. There were healings going on, right? My God, right? Some people, right when you walked in the door, that depression lifted right off of you. I believe that because you're in an atmosphere that's open to the Holy Ghost having his way whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it, and why ever he wants to do it. Now somebody shout amen. I can have these things not a concept it is a reality I can know these things so from here on don't ever recite 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 without adding on to it verse 10 Verse 11 says, for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but what? But the spirit of God. Hold on, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of the other dimension, which is of God. That we might know the things, can I give you one more, that are freely given to us of God. I want you to underline freely given to us of God. When you know (laughs) 
You're in the kingdom. And you have the spirit, which is helping you get access to the things of the other dimension. There are some things you won't even have to work for. You won't even have to toil for it. Because you understand this is freely given to me. This is freely given to me. I want to know the things that are freely given to me of God. I don't want to waste another day in a relationship that wasn't supposed to be free. Man, listen to me now. I don't want to waste my time. I'm telling you on another job that got me doing all this stuff, but it ain't producing nothing for me. I don't want to make another contract. Don't get connect me with another person that's going to waste my time. I want the free stuff, God. I want the stuff that you said already belongs to me. I don't care if nobody else has it. I don't care if nobody else wants it. I want the free stuff. I'm tired of having to toil and then call that toil faith. No, you said there are things that are mine. They belong to me. I'm supposed to have it. I want that. I want those things they are spiritually discerned I can't get them on my own so I'm gonna step over here in the spirit and I'm gonna let the spirit lead me in my life to the things that freely belong to me there are certain things God has called you to have because you're supposed to have them nobody else in your family may have it but you're supposed to have it Man, you may not have ever experienced it, but you're supposed to have it. Now, let's 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 deepen this. Let's deepen this now. Let's deepen this now, because because for a long time, whenever we start talking about the blessing that is ours and the things that belong to us, the, 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 the name it and claim it systematic operation of doing things. And I want to name it and I'm a claim it and I'm a name it. And I'm a get it. And I'm not against that because you can speak those things which are not. You should open up your mouth and confess. You should never stop dreaming. But do you understand this supersedes just us? being blessed materially some of the greatest things God could ever give you one is wisdom the other is knowledge the other is character the other is holiness you you can't tell my holiness by the clothes I got on man but I'm telling you if you deal with me and you engage with me you should see that I'm holy do you not understand that these things are, are man I call them economic forces of the kingdom and they get you stuff they put you up in position where you can buy and sell in the kingdom of God and receive from God all that you are supposed to have this thing of receiving from God that which is freely given unto you does not just come from you saying I want this house and I want this car God is not so much worried about your car as much as worried about the wisdom that you use to get it because if he can give you wisdom to get a car he might could give you wisdom to open up a car business we're going to deal with this one day the economy of the kingdom man we're going to deal with this Uh, you're stepping into the economy the means by which God supplies for you the livelihood that you're supposed to have in the culture of the kingdom according to the rule and authority of God our king we recorded it if you don't remember it listen to it later Here's this. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things, though the things that are freely given us by God. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing what? Spiritual things with what? He says, verse 14, but the natural man can't receive these things. The natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him? Verse, here it goes. But we have the what? 
Say that. I have. That's a different mind. It's not a collegiate mind alone. It's not a medical mind, though it can help your collegiate experience and your medical pursuit. It is the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? I have the mind of Christ. Come on, man. (laughs) They're getting on my nerve, man. Come on, man. Show me what to say. I'm about to cuss him out. Come on, man. Help me. I'm about to lose it. Come on, man. Turn on in the name of Jesus. Help me, God. Come on, man. I got the mind of Christ. When I know the word, I know what I have. I have. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We pray that you are blessed by everything that was shared. And we look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue our pursuit of faith and empowerment in the kingdom. God bless you.